So today we're going to show you how to install the smart carb. I'm really excited about smart carb in general. Um, actually, let me back up and give you a little bit of context. So I bought this 2006 two stroke. It's a KTM 300. The two stroke is awesome. But one of the problems with an older two stroke is that they're carbureted. We ride at a couple of different significant elevation points. You've got to like jet your bike for the right elevation. In addition to that, carbs require like all kinds of cleaning and processing and like you got to throw new seals on and the floats have issues and sometimes your fuel mileage is terrible and like if you tip the bike over fuels running out of six different lines and there's technology now that you can apply to any of these old carbureted bikes that's actually going to get them like 90 percent of the way to fuel injection what you get with fuel injection is full fuel mapping for all these different kinds of conditions so you really can't replicate that in a mechanical carb but you can get just about everything else come with us and let's install a smart carb this is a smart carb it's pretty cool looking here's the stock carb that we're going to be pulling out we're going to start by pulling the cap so we can get the throttle cable out. And the needle. Then I need to take the adjusting nut off the top. It comes out. You can release the throttle cable from inside the uh, slide. Now we remove the cover. Done. Next, you're gonna remove the cover of the smart carb. You gotta hold the cover because there's a spring inside. Okay, now we're gonna release it. See, there's that return spring. There's a stop on the end of the return spring, like a, I guess a guide. So we can remove this. And then basically it's just the reverse of what we just went through. So we're gonna thread this in. Spring, we've gotta compress it a little. And a retaining guide, keep all that compressed. And then we feed this in and we move it to the side. And there it is. And then we're gonna drop this back in the smart carb and line up the needle. And we're gonna put the cap back on. Carb goes like this between intake boot and the engine. All right, we're gonna get a screwdriver, pull clamps that hold this in place and get it out of the way. <clears throat> that boot is cracked and fucked up. There's the old carb, but this boot is real badly cracked. So I'm gonna replace it. There's a vent inlet here. That's what creates the constant pressure on the float bowl. And that's what solves for uh, elevation change. And they say in the manual that some boots can cover this up slightly and then it won't work properly. So we're gonna pull the filter. Once we get this installed, we're gonna take a peek in there, make sure it's good. And then the fill process is you need to leave the choke open as you turn the petcock on slowly and let this thing fill with gas and replace the air, I guess, that's in the float bowl. Then obviously I have a bunch to put back together but uh, eventually we'll get the bike fired up and test out the new car. I'm very excited. Probably when you find extra parts, no idea where it goes. We're gonna hook up the fuel line. I bought extra because I'm gonna route it slightly differently from stock because there's a fuel filter that goes in. All right, gonna fire it up. Got a new stator and a new carb. It won't idle, so that's fine. Figure out the carb. And that's the smart carb installed, up and running, and performing fantastically. I've dumped the bike over a few times, doing some hill climbs, I've dropped it on the trail, whatever. Fuel will still run out of the gas tank if you get it tipped like upside down, but no fuel is coming out of any of the carb overflow lines, which is really nice. The fuel mixture is easy to adjust. I've played around with it a bit to get it tuned just right for the kind of riding that I do. Fuel mileage is good and consistent. I noticed that I can ride anything from like nine, 10,000 feet, which we did in Kennedy Meadows, to down here at 2,700. All of that range without ever adjusting anything about the carb. It just works. Um, it's not hard to put in. It's not hard to figure out how to adjust it. And before I let you go, we make chin mounts for helmets that you can run your GoPro and or a light. So we just finished the 24 hours of Glen Helen motocross race. And most of the guys out there were running our chin mounts and running either a Dango or an Oxbow light. In fact, Brent from American Dirt Rider actually put two Oxbow lights, one on each of these double fork mounts from our chin mounts. We are also now selling a few accessories. So we've got this 90 degree adapter. We've had that up for a little while. We've also got this door. So this is a GoPro door for Hero 9 
9, 10, and 11 now, and it'll open so that you can plug a cable into it while still closing the battery compartment. It's not waterproof, but it'll keep dust and a lot of, you know, mud and dirt and stuff like that out. And if you should happen to break your GoPro lens, they're replaceable on the, not on the 8, but on the 9, 10, and 11. Again, um, we've got these aftermarket replacement lenses that we carry in our shop. So links in the description, check all that out. Go check out the podcast, like, and subscribe because the podcast is awesome and there's more episodes coming. And yeah, go buy a smart carb. Um, I've had a really, really, really good experience with them. They're a little bit expensive, but if you've got an older two stroke and you want to get something close to fuel injection performance with a mechanical setup, smart carb is the way to go. Thanks guys.